Thank you, Father Matthew. Thank you, all the staff, and to all of you here today for uh, offering myself and my group such a warm welcome. So I would like to say a few words about inner peace. This is um, obviously a topic which is very close to my heart. I have been living in the jungles and forests and quiet places in, in, in Thailand now for more than 40 years. And I have been devoted to the training of the mind. Now I think that when we speak about peace, actually we don't really have a very clear idea of what that is. And so one of the main reasons that so few people really have direct experience of peace is they don't know what it is and they don't know how to find it. So the idea I would like to share with you today is that we can develop a technology for discovering and experiencing peace comparable to the technologies that we have developed in the world to increase our material quality of life. Of course, the inner quality of life is not something that can be produced by some uh, material technology like a computer. But if you, if you look up the word technology in your dictionary, you will observe that the definition of technology does not restrict its meaning to material objects, but also refers to techniques and principles for applying knowledge of nature, of the way things are, to improving the quality of human life. So, in the search for truth and the search for peace, we find that these are actually one and the same thing. But the quality that we need to develop, firstly and most importantly, is mindfulness, developing observation skills. Because if we want to find peace in our life, we have to conduct an examination of all of the qualities that prevent peace from arising. There is a, a, was a famous occasion in Italy when the great artist Michelangelo was asked about one of his most famous sculptures. It's a, a rearing horse and it's made just out of one block of stone. And someone asked Michelangelo, how could you sculpt this horse that looks so alive from a block, just an ordinary rock? And he replied, I did not sculpt the horse. All I did was removed all the parts of the rock that were not the horse. So this, I like this um, saying very much because in the search for peace, the most important effort is to understand and remove all the obstacles to peace that we create ourselves moment by moment because we do not understand ourselves, because we do not give the time to look inside and understand ourselves. There is a story about a foolish man and he was standing in the middle of the road under the light, looking here and looking there, and somebody came up to him and said, what are you doing? He said, I am looking for my keys. And, and they said, oh, we'll help you. Where did you think you dropped them? They said, I dropped them in the garden. 
He said, well, why are you looking for your keys in the road? He said, because it is very bright here. It's very dark in the garden. Very difficult to look for something in the garden. And of course he said, well, even if it's very bright, uh, the keys are not here. They're in the garden. And the keys to peace and happiness we can find inside ourselves, not outside ourselves. But we have to apply technology. We have to be systematic. It's not that there is one thing called agitation and confusion and one thing called peace and we have to turn our back on the confusion and look for the peace somewhere else. We find the peace by understanding the nature of our mind, by looking within. This is what meditation means. It means giving your life some quality time. Rather than being a student or a daughter or a son or a this or a that, you just come back to your nature. Basically, there is the body and the mind. And you need to study your body and study your mind, not as philosophy, not as psychology, not as biology, but as direct experience. What it really feels like right now to be a human being. What is happiness? What is pain? What is suffering? What is the relationship between pain and suffering? One mathematician who was a Buddhist, he came up with a formula. He said, pain multiplied by the desire to get rid of pain is suffering. So I, I don't have time to explain. I'll leave this to you for your homework to see whether you agree with it or not. So when we look inside, what we find is it's so difficult. Our mind is like a monkey. It is something interesting. What does it mean to be a human being? What is my experience of pleasure and pain and happiness and suffering? And um, how can I train my mind to reduce the causes of suffering and to increase the causes of happiness? This is something we all as human beings have a capacity for. But we're so interested in the world outside ourselves that we don't give any time to the world inside. So many different techniques. But the, the uh, underlying principle is you put your mind on one thing. And for instance, many uh, people use the breathing because this is completely neutral, it doesn't belong to uh, any religion. The breath comes in, your breath comes out, it's part of the human being. But if you use that as an object of mindfulness, then you can create a stability of mind. It's a training of mind. Your mind goes off, you bring it back. Your mind goes off, you bring it back. And then you say, oh, that's the border. I don't want to do that. But then I often say, well, how did, have you learned to play a musical instrument? Have you learned any skill at all which did not require some very hard work at the beginning, on the very basis? If you want to play the piano, you have to know that the white notes and the black notes and so on and so forth. So it is quite difficult in the beginning. But there is, you can see some progress. And so one of the analogies to explain this is of a tap. You turn on the tap just, just a little bit and you get a drip of water. Just drip, 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 like this. When you turn on the tap a bit longer, it's drip, 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 drip. And if you turn on the tap fully, you get a flow of water. So when you begin to meditate, the meditation, the awareness that you want, Clarity of mind you want is like a trip. It's trip, trip. You practice this a bit more, trip, 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 and eventually you get a flow of awareness. This is what we call samadhi. So this is the first stage of meditation to create this still and clear, stable mind. And when your mind becomes clear and stable, it, it feels really good. Now, as you, as you progress, 
then your understanding of yourself and your mind changes. And of course, I, I don't have time to give a long discourse today, but I will give one more analogy to give you an idea. If you look at the sky, so there's the sky, and there are all those things in the sky, different kinds of clouds, birds, aeroplanes, but the sky is not affected by clouds. You can have a cloudless sky, just a very few misty clouds or thick thunder clouds, and but the sky remains the sky. It's not affected by the clouds. The, there may be birds, there may be aeroplanes, all these things are arising, passing away, passing through the sky, but at the same time, there is a sense that the sky is unaffected by that. And so, in a busy world, being peaceful does not mean that you have to step back from the world and, uh, and to neglect your responsibilities to your family or your community. All those things are like the things that go through the sky. But at the same time, you can just shift your focus from all of the moving things and responsibilities.